Um, I welcome and I greet you tonight in the name of our Jesus Christ, our Lord, and thank you for your presence. Um, this will be a little different kind of service. First of all, I tell you, it's not very long. I'm not long-winded if you don't, if you haven't been here before. But you'll see me going in and going back and forth, and there's a purpose in it. Now, I've been here almost three years, and I can tell you, this is as full as I've seen this little church. And it, thank you so much. You have no idea why I'm saying that, but thank you. It's been a long couple of months, and it's so good to see so many of you. Well, let's, uh, let's turn to our bulletin, and I, uh, I need to get work. And you'll see in your bulletin when it's time for you to stand. I'm not even going to try to tell you that. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelled in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. Or to us the child is born. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and evermore. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to have a prayer and then I'm going to lead into um, the Lord's Prayer. And if you so desire, you can join us all together. All right, let me begin with, uh, with our invocation. Lord Jesus, help us to become more and more aware of Christmas of the love that you have given to us and how much you gave to us through your son, Jesus Christ. When life does not go exactly the way that we would like for it to go, help us to remember that your love can be found in all kinds of circumstances. Help us to accept the surprises that always seem to come, the good and the bad, we thank you for those who are here this evening. We ask that your blessing be upon them. Now, as we join together and pray the prayer that you have taught us to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm proud this evening to have two of my really good friends, Patty and Robert, to light the Christ candle. And I'm going to invite them to come forward, please. Through repentance, faith, and obedience, our hearts and minds are prepared for Christmas. Now we find an angel sent by God to shepherds in the fields near Bethlehem. The angel announces very good news about salvation. The Savior is born. Good news about the King. Christ the Lord is present. Good news about the present. The God in the flesh has arrived. We light the candle of good news, reminding us of the good news announced by an angel to the shepherds. Let us pray. O oh God, with joy and gratitude, we praise you from the heavenly host. With the shepherds, we hear the good news. Our Lord and Savior has come. Glory be to the God in the highest. Amen.
Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, I'm reading from Luke 2, uh, chapter 8 through 20. And in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And, and an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. And the glory of the Lord stood before them and shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born to you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, and will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. And it came about when the angel had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds began to sing to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see that this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in haste and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as <clears throat> he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which has been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it has didn't talk to them. I'm going to have a prayer again. May we be in the spirit of prayer. On this occasion, Lord, when we celebrate the birth of your son, we pray for students, travelers, military men and women, who cannot be at home with their families at this Christmas season. Give them the hope that they may be reunited with their loved ones soon. We pray for those who are poor, the homeless, those who are hospitalized, compel us to practice the art of caring and stir our conscience to deeper levels of seasonal goodwill and lasting peace. Arouse our faith to be a star level horizon where we can truly behold the mystery and the wonder of your love. And oh yes, Lord, like a Christmas tree, lighten up the prism of our hearts so that our experience of your presence will radiate forth an honest witness to others. Humbly, we, we pray this in the name of him who had gave us an opportunity for lasting peace. Amen. Good evening. Do you believe in dreams? Do you? I do. I haven't always so. You might wonder why I'm here in the church this evening. Um, got rough hands. I usually have a saw or a hammer with me. And I know you probably, I smell like sawdust. I knew that. Oh, my name. I didn't tell you my name, did I? I'm Joseph. My wife's name is Mary. And we have a son named Jesus. I want to tell you a story that may seem unbelievable, but we need to flee. We need to go to Egypt. 
Let me explain why I feel we must take this quick trip. I leave it with all kinds of apprehension. The story I'm about to relate to you is strange and maybe to those of you of modern times, it seems unbelievable. Oh, it all began when I first saw Mary. I passed through the village and I could see her. She was beautiful and there was a kind of radiance with her. Over a period of time, I made arrangements with her father for us to have a marriage. Then the whole world, it, it seemed to collapse. I was asleep. I could hear some pounding on the door. I went to the door and it was Mary's father. He yelled out, Mary has disappeared. Mary has disappeared. Mary is gone. This wasn't the Mary that either of us knew. She would not be like that. Then she returned from Nazareth just as suddenly as she had left. But the story that she had to tell, it was utterly unbelievable. Then quickly and quietly, she told of the appearance of an angel, Gabriel. I didn't know what to say or what to do as she said all of this. I left and simply said good night to Mary. It was a restless night for me. I could hardly sleep at all. It was unthinkable to me that Mary would be guilty of adultery. What was a man to think? Very frankly, I confess that I doubted the whole story. My first thought was to run away from all of this and to leave Nazareth. But the more that I thought about it, the more I realized that I really couldn't do that. Finally, I made up my mind that there would be no scandal, no disgrace. That night, I had a dream. Suddenly before me was an angel that said, fear not, Joseph. I just wanted to know you and tell you that Mary should be your wife. And the child that you are bearing was conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. And he shall be great and wonderful. And you shall call his name Jesus. And he shall save all the people from their sins. That night, you're right. I too began to change. And I remember, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. How often in the following months, Mary and I talked over and over again about the wonderful and the amazing events which had changed our lives. But we had to go back. We had to go back to our homeland, taxes. You think you have taxes. We had taxes. The Romans wanted to make sure that nobody got away from it. So we went back to where we were from. We were from the house and the line of David. So we made that long, long journey to Bethlehem. A woman, a child, and a donkey. 80 miles. Five days to get there. When we got there, Mary was sick. She needed some rest. I tried to find a place where we could be. I went to all the innkeepers and I heard the same story. We're crowded. And finally, one innkeeper, I began to nudge him. And by the push and the kindness of his wife, we found a place in a stable. We heard the words, praise be to the Lord of Israel. And it came from all of the shepherds that were standing around. They told us this remarkable story about our son. In a few days, Mary was strong enough to make the trip. 
That night, there was another sign shortly after sunset. Three, not one, two, but three visitors came. Stately kings, I believe they were called from the east with a strange story about some brilliant star in the sky that they had followed to see this baby that was named Jesus. And just, just before morning, I dreamed again. The dream that I told you about the beginning. The angel appeared. Fear not, Joseph. Fear not, Joseph. But the child's life is in danger. You must flee immediately to the land of Egypt. And he was gone and I was awake. There's no doubt. I must be obedient to this vision. I began to prepare for my long trip. We did make a trip to Egypt. As I close, I just say this. Is it any wonder that I trust in the guiding hand of Almighty God? Like the psalmist says in your Bible, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall you be afraid? Amen and amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And now the light has been given to you this evening or this afternoon, technically. May you be the light for others shining the light of Jesus Christ to this world. Let me close with these words. Receive the comfort that comes from Psalm 89. Blessed are those who hear the joyful blast of the trumpet, for they shall walk in the light of his presence. And now may the joy, the love, and the peace that comes from the gift of the baby Jesus be with you now and forevermore. All men and you're on. Thank you.